ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.tv and watch from any device. Moving now to Judea and Samaria, the West Bank is rampaging as settlers entered a playground inside the Palestinian hamlet of Susia in the South Hebron Hills. According to left-wing Israeli activists on the scene, the settlers expelled Palestinian children who were in the playground, and this in addition to a video released over the weekend allegedly showing the IDF doing nothing as masked settlers threw stones at a Palestinian house near the village of Burin. So why the apparent apathy, and how exactly should the IDF be acting in these situations? Joining us now is former senior legal advisor to the IDF legal department, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, David Benjamin. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Lieutenant Colonel. Now, how do you see the situation of soldiers apparently abstaining from any action against the settlers? And do you suspect any trickery or clever editing in the videos? Well, well first of all, I think I, we, we should look at the general legal situation as it is determined by international law, which is the international law that Israel accepts and applies in that area. And that is that the... There's a separate legal universe, and the supreme authority in that legal universe is the senior commander of the IDF in the area. In other words, that's where the buck stops. So formally speaking, the responsibility for law and order, public order generally, uh, stops with the IDF. And that law and order means protecting the persons and rights of everybody, regardless of their nationality. So I would say that at the outset. Uh, for that purpose, IDF soldiers are granted special powers, which they don't have inside sovereign Israel. Um, that means police powers like arrest and search and seizure, uh, which are meant for dealing with these law enforcement situations. Now, of course, in practice, it's quite complicated because the IDF, its primary focus is to deal with external threats, wars, etc., um, and certainly it's, its primary mandate in, in those areas is to protect Israeli citizens from the threat of terrorism. Of course, this gets complicated, especially if you given the fact that there are actually law enforcement agencies, such as the Israeli police and the Israeli border police, who do act in those areas on behalf of the well, IDF and are meant to deal with law enforcement situations. Well, I think that we can all appreciate, now, I, I think that we can appreciate, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, the, the difficult situation that IDF soldiers often find themselves in. Uh, but, it, but again, my question is more in these specific situations where we've seen a handful of videos of IDF soldiers either not engaging or, or you know, otherwise distancing themselves from, from Israeli settler activity uh, that violates the, the human rights of Palestinians. Yeah, it does. Well, I, I mean, there could be, obviously, there could be, a, as you suggested, a question of editing. You know, often these, these, these movies and, and reports are, are submitted by, by uh, uh, bodies who might have an agenda, okay, to make the IDF look bad. But there is really the fact that can't be denied that, obviously, to, 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 to expect IDF soldiers, and of course, that is the expectation, there's no excuse for it, but to expect IDF soldiers to use force against Israeli civilians in order to enforce law and order, it is always difficult, and, and, and this might not be openly said, but for, for commanders to send their troops, you know, 18, 19-year-old kids into that situation, it's not something they relish. Ideally, what should be happening is that the law enforcement authorities, if it's the police, if, if it's the border police, they should be sent in. The IDF's responsibility should be to provide perimeter security, to secure, secure the areas so that the police can work, to, to put them in a situation where they need to violently confront violent Israelis is something that really should be avoided. But again, there's no excuse because at the end of the day, the IDF is responsible and, and until there's a better situation in place or a better system or better resources, it falls at the IDF's door. All right, so you know, how, how does uh, a video like this you know, even exist? That is to say, how does the IDF allow for such uh, apathy or malaise? Is there going to be uh, any sort of uh, consequence or action taken against the IDF or the settlers in the video, or, or any other involved parties, uh, assuming that they are uh, uh, guilty of their allegations. You know, uh, you know, a lawyer. A typical lawyer's answer is it depends, or it's complicated, right? So I'm not, I'm not familiar exactly with the legal claim. There might be legal claims involved that I'm not familiar with. But generally speaking, a vi you know, a violent act of trespass is a, is a, is an offense, a, a criminal offense. 
and those responsible need to be arrested. So the civilians, the Israeli civilians who were participating in act, they, the law should be applied to them. They should be arrested and you know, they should have to give explanations to a court of law. Um, as far as the IDF soldiers are concerned, again, you know, they would have probably been acting uh, under orders, um, probably reluctant to get involved for the reasons, obvious reasons that, I, that, that I've set out. Um, this whole area where the waters are so muddy is such a, is, is such fertile ground for lapses of judgment. So I, I don't know if one, one should be using criminal uh, 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 sanctions for lapses of judgment. Uh, but certainly, again, the expectation of the IDF is to protect all civilians, regardless of their nationality, in these situations. That, that is the expectation. Certainly, the higher up the chain you look, uh, um, the, the commanders can be expected to take responsibility and understand their situation difficult as it is. Well, do, do you think that there's maybe a better situation, something that, that can come about? You know, should the IDF, in your opinion, continue to act as a sort of police force in the West Bank? Or, or is there maybe a better arrangement that you can come up with that would help prevent uh, these types of uh, altercations? Well, it's easy for me to say, of course, because there's always a question of resources that can be allocated. But this, that the ideal solution would be to, to bring much larger numbers of police and border police into these areas and have them available on much shorter notice to be able to intervene and, and take care of these situations. To put these young you know, national servicemen or, or, or reservists in a situation where they need to violently confront violent Israelis is far from being ideal, and, and it's also not effective. It puts them in a very difficult situation. And then you see this kind of situation developing. Ideally, dealing with that situation should have been police or border police. All right, Lieutenant Colonel David Benyamin, thank you so much for, for joining us and for your insights. Thank you.